Lucian Tavern pub, but it was it was again boarded up, but with the metal sheets. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, okay, that was back in February. Now we in September. I've been chilling in my house day in day out, and nobody has come for me. You know, I, I literally two weeks before this, I was down Thulston Police Station collecting my cans, which they took back in June. That didn't flag up then. So why are you saying to me I'm wanted? They said, oh, this is weird. This is, this is, this is weird, but you're wanted. So I was like, all right, cool. And I was thinking, all right, well, what's going to happen now? And I was like, oh, what's going to happen? She's like, oh, we're going to have to take you in. Killer, killer, podcast. Killer, killer, official .com. <laughs> You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the app store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Hey, this is nice, isn't it? There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast serves you right, reporting to you live and direct central London or as central as you need to be. Yeah, it won't be anywhere else, trust me. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Go check them out. Also, hold tight, all the regulars, people have got the Television app. On a free download, listen, there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of things about to go down. Um, big shout out to everybody that went to the Maps Con. Yeah, it was a big one. We're going to do that quarterly. But coming up in central London near you, you will be uh, experiencing the best. You can go down there and check it out. Exhibitions. I can't even know the name of the venue, to be fair, lads. Blackmore, <laughs> Bowen, inside the house. How are we doing? What's going, going on? Yeah, right? no, I see me power and powering through shit, you know what I mean? How's it going? Burning Blackmore. I mean, it's, that's the name, the title of the event, isn't it? Yeah, Burning Blackmore X Freud Bar with Freud. Uh, so Freud's a um, famous cocktail bar. has been there 35 years. Whoa. Covent Garden, Shaftesbury Avenue. Yeah. 35 uh, years? Yeah, they just had their little anniversary thing. Yeah, last week. Last week? Yeah. Mate, that's mad when you think, like, I never heard of the place. So then all of a sudden it's like 35 years. Walked in there the other day with you guys and it was like it was quite a divey atmosphere. It's nice, man. It's got like um, some nice climber plants outside, like Chinese wisterias growing up it. Like for me, I love that stuff, you know, brick walls, wisterias, climbers, plants. It gives the whole scene. And um, yeah, like I've, I've been past it years ago, but um, but yeah, it was good that actually like these guys were like, yo, should you know, come and do a show here? And I'm like, yeah, cool, man. Then stepped in there the first time uh, a few weeks ago when we did the meetings and stuff. Then, yeah, man, just got me inspired to think, yeah, we're going to do this show late November. Uh, Bowen and Blackmore, hit it off, you know? Mm -hmm. You guys are synonymous together. Like, as so far as, like, you guys being out and interact, I think the styles are really complimentary to each other, aren't they? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Bless, man. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, of course, we've had we've had um, our kid on a bunch of times, but Harry Blackmore, we've, this is like the first time you've actually stepped on the mic. Huh? Yeah, man. Yeah, it's my first ever podcast. This. Tell, so. tell me about tell me about stylistically your approach because obviously the the, the exhibition is going to reflect this as well. Mm. Uh, well, for this one, you know, I'm basically I've I've gone for um, I'm a self taught artist, so I never studied art or anything. Um, and um, when I came to London, sort of 2016, you know, and I wasn't like happy in what I was doing a lot of the time. And um, so I ended up just starting to do a bit of art, more of just one for myself. And I had a bit of a design background. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was starting with that. And then, then I discovered spray paint and then uh, everything changed a bit. Mm. Um, but yeah, man, it just, it, it developed, you know, I just developed my own thing over the last five years, you know. Um, it started off like all spacey and stuff, but now I'm all about colours and angles and lines more. And, um, yeah, trying to... I'm about escapism. Mm. So, you know, that's that's what I... That's why I do what I do, because it gives me that feeling of, like, just, you know... You, you go down in these urban environments, man, and you look at that and it just takes you takes you somewhere else for a bit. Oh, that's so beautiful. Actually, while you know? we're here, there's... um. Oh, yeah, if, yeah. if you're watching and not listen, if you're listening and not watching, just, this here uh, is uh, representative of what Harry is talking about. It's a plated tile with some of the most heaviest graphics. Proper business. Thank you so much for. Hey, you're welcome, bro. Giving you're us welcome. that in the pod trap, man. It's so sick. Um, so yeah, if you're uh, listening and not watching, you should check that out. Um, Nathan, I mean, brother, my mate, like you've been everywhere 
with your business. I get yeah. text messages, WhatsApp messages from everybody going, I've seen him there, I've seen him there, I've seen him. I mean, like, you're giving, you're giving, the, you're giving the authorities a run for the money, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, man, I mean, it's, it's like, you know, doing it uh, as a business as well, yeah. running the Nathan Barron art shop online. Um, and also like juggling the street art, you know, you've got to make that balance where there's the street art and the home stuff mm -hmm. and also the marketing. Uh, but mainly my marketing is guerrilla, you know, going out, keeping that, keeping it raw, mm. keeping it fresh. Um, you know, you, you don't want to fall into the traps of this modern day where you're just promoting on social media. Yeah. You can't, you just promote on that. You need your own avenues, you know, mm. your, your own heart. Mm. And that's what I do. Like, um, so yeah, recently just been doing some, uh, a lot of paste ups. So yeah. making uh, the, the stuff from home. Um, I'm still getting the same feeling, um, same desire that when I, when I spray my back garden, you know, when I hit a spray can and the spray can hits the, the sheet, the sheet of paper, what I'm going to about to paste up, mm. it still feels like it's a wall. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, you know, the paste ups, yeah, it's a new direction. We've got Blackmore doing the paste ups as well, mm. doing some of these planets as well. Because it's just like nowadays, there's a lack of hoardings. Yeah. Put these up as well. Oh, the tiles. The, the tiles. Oh, so the tiles go up as well. Yeah, the tilings as well. Yeah, Way so go. paste ups and tiles, like different different mediums. It's yeah. not always just about like you know going rago, uh, spraying on the street. Sometimes you want to be a bit tactical. Mm. Sometimes you want to just use the other side of the brain where you're thinking, you know what, we can make products from home, bring them out to the street. People see them, then later we could sell them. Mm. So yeah, it's all just a, a, a big marketing line. Um, but yeah, we keep it guerrilla. You mm. know, we, we keep it raw. If people steal it from the street, that's cool. That's that's good luck to them, isn't it? Dude, you've <laughs> you've always been the most giving person. Like me and Harry talked about this only the other day, didn't we, Harry? Like you know, we're now about to big up your flower chest. All right, we're gonna big yeah. it up because I swear to God, like in terms of giving and uh, passing knowledge. And just genu gen generally being a don, like you are very much in line with the people. You want everyone to experience yeah, yeah. art and street art and graph. That's yeah, essentially absolutely. isn't it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You know, it's it's it's, it's yeah. Like I said, I, I wake up in the morning and I you know I say to myself like sometimes I just want to stay in bed. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> like most people, uh, but I say to myself, get up and give in it. That's the term. Get up and give. Mm. What have I got to give? You know, I don't want to wake up and take. I want to get up and give, so I wake up, take care of the family, mm. take care of the dog, take care of the animals. Mm. That's me giving. Hold on, know. breaks. How many animals you got? Oh well, <laughs> I've, I've now I keep now I've got a dog, but now I keep birds. Birds, I yeah. Keep a lot of birds, so I keep quails and ducks. Do you? Yeah, I've got two ducks called Percy and Ingle, male and female, and I've got quails. Um, so yeah, the quails. Basically, it's like an urban farm in my backyard garden, urban farming. What day is it today? This I wasn't expecting this coming up. Right, hold on. So time for a tease. Mate. Yeah, time for yeah. yes, yes, drinking. Yeah, praying mantis as well, and I had a few of them. Not at the moment, but have you been, have you passed around? Have you seen this this oh, mate, it's menagerie? Fucking nuts! Really? <laughs> yeah, man, What's the backyard? Man's Just got like bird house, man built a fucking bird house shed. <laughs> you know? Really? And, yeah, man. So you walk in and it's like birds everywhere. It, so in my back garden, in the yeah, back you, garden, you yeah. go to my back garden and I built like a duck house. So it's like a big shed. Right. Um, so I, I used to do a lot of woodwork and stuff. So I, I was good, good at like, you know, DT, DIY, building things. So, so I've, I've got a talent for making bird cages, mm -hmm. but big bird cages. So all my birds, they, they have free roam. The ducks get free roam in the garden, let them out during the day. Uh, the quells, they, they tend to fly. So I build a big enough cage for them to stay in. Because, you know, you can get into the subject of like, oh, man, you're keeping birds in cages, man. But it's like, yo, where, where do your eggs come from? Caged animals. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, yo, I, I, I want to I learn. During lockdown, I just learned to do uh, the whole um, self-sufficient thing with, with the eggs. You know, I'll have to have a farm one day. But I'll start off with keeping birds, getting eggs. And the eggs I have, uh, yeah, the, um, the quail eggs and duck eggs. I love that you do that. Yeah. I love that you do that. And not only that, but... The fact that it's almost like this is some Clark Kent and Superman business. Well, yeah, I mean, like it's, I do other things as well as art, but art is my main thing. But yeah, it's, it's good learning the other other stuff. Um, so having the birds, 
it's, you know, it's been a lot of ups and downs, don't get me wrong. You know, a few birds die here and there. A few, few birds might get taken by a cat. Uh, but yo, man, there's there's more positive than negatives. But well, I've always got to mention the negatives because I don't want to make people think that, yo, everything's all sweet. But yo, like one of the quails died today, you know, unfortunately. Oh, rest yeah, in peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a good quail. It was a good quail. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I just, yo, this, these are the realities when you keep animals. Things happen, they die, but you you have to have the mindset of yeah, it's life, isn't it? It is indeed. It is indeed. How I mean, I can ask both of you this. How do you... People are going to be out there and they're going to see it for what it is. You guys are everywhere. You guys are doing your thing together. Yeah, yeah. Like collaboratively, it's the, the, di- the dynamic. Big up Name 26 as well, of course. Mm. Big up um, Name you know, there's a there's a there's yeah, a co- there's a collect there's a collect there's a, a collection of you guys that g- kind of roll together, and I see it all, mm. um, you know, in harmony. But there is two worlds to to how you guys live and work, and how do you balance that out? Like, how, how do you put a schedule? Because there'll be a lot of people out there. It's just like, well, how are they getting up in all these different towns? How are they able to do exhibitions? How are they able to you know collect, collect birds and and uh, you know and do degrees? You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I mean, for me, I, I you know I, I had a full time job up until about three and a half months ago. Right. But I used to work weekends and I used to work on like uh, markets. Um. So uh, I had a lot of free time during the week, and there was no one. He was always just about in it during the week. So yeah. he was like, "I'll oh, come out and do stuff." Oh, now, so you so you were initiating like time when you weren't working to get together. Yeah. 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 Mixing it up. Yeah. So it just it worked out really well, basically. Like I was always, I was the only one around. He was always like, "Who can I hang out with?" I'm going out by myself with a dog. Yeah. Like, who am I gonna hang out with? So I'm always like, "Yo, let's go, innit? it." Um, and also, like you know, I was doing. You know, my background is like hotel management and all this, and hated it, hated it. And for like you know, probably like eight years of my life, I was like, "What am I doing?" Like, mm. quit getting qu- uh, fired and quitting and fired and quitting. My, parents sent me to live with my brother in New Zealand, you know what I mean? And then when I was hanging out with Nathan, and seeing what he does, you know, and and how he makes a living, you know, and how he basically, like, like you know, he used to get in a lot of shit and his parents always be like, what are you doing, you know, from the stories he's told me. Mm. And now he's like the most successful person in his family, you know, and he's... That's he's, what I'm talking about. You know about. what I mean? <laughs> and he just does his own thing. Like, when people are like, oh, you shouldn't do that, he's like, oh, why not? I'll do it and then makes a success out of it. Yeah, there you is know? a get up and go. But with every yeah. one of you guys, there's, there's a there's a charm, there's a character in each of you that's that, that yeah. kind of goes across, it transcends the, the art, doesn't it? Absolutely, man. Um, we were only talking about name a minute ago, you know, you should be a presenter <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, so he's like, um, he's, uh, I've known Harry for a few years now, but uh, I originally know Harry from a friend of a friend. And I used to go. I used to go to um, Bucks, uh, High Wycombe. High Wycombe, yeah. And so I, I, I never, I, I never went to the uni, but my my friends went there, and these friends I knew from school. So um, yeah, like 10, 12 years ago, I'd always come to Bucks Uni, hang out with the guys, watch a bit of UFC, make a few beats, this is do like a bit of rapping. Two thousand and five, two thousand six. Yeah, two thousand six, uh, seven, two thousand six, seven, all them days. And yeah, I would pop down there every like once a month or every other month. And then, um, yeah, met Harry. And then this is the time where, like, yeah, I was I was doing art, but I wasn't really doing street art. I was just, just doing doodles on the yeah, sketchbook. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, um, yeah, just got to know Harry from them days. And then um, Harry moved to London um, about maybe, like, five five years ago, five, six years ago. And then um, hanging out with Dan Harry's gaff. Then, I, you know, all, the, all he was doing was just chilling out, playing music, uh, and just, just not doing much. So I was like, dude, you... you you tried doing any art, you fancy doing a bit of art, like, you know, you could just, I don't know, do something, man, you know, do something. <clears throat> you can't just be getting stoned all the time. You could get stoned and you could make something, you know? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I was just like, yo, bruv, like, you know, just start doing some art. So yeah, he, um, I don't know, he's just, you tell him, man, you, you, you just got your way, you found your yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, like, I think, <clears throat> You know, like, the art chose me, innit? Yeah, it sounds like it. It sounds like... <laughs> like, you know, as soon as I started doing the art, my everything, like, my life has completely changed slowly, you know, yeah. but it's been a lot of hard work. Talk to me about know? that hard, hard work, because that, to me, sounds like a really... Um, a rare a rare occurrence that yeah. you fall into art just out of... Uh, not nothing to do, but to fulfil your time. 
kind of feel a, a, a bit missing in my life. Yeah. You know, as weird as that sounds. So tell me about that. Tell me about how that process... Ha- you know, I mean, I learned, I learned a lot from Nathan. You know, he taught me because he's been doing this for a long time. Yeah. And, you know, I was, I was just having fun and doing my thing at home and just messing, like, you know, bought some paint pens and just, just drawing, like, eyeballs and shit like this. <laughs> it's, like, weird, you know, didn't really know what I was doing, but I quite enjoyed doing it. That's yeah, yeah. all I knew. So, uh, and then I think it was, um, was it Pancakes and Booze? I don't know if you know that one. It's like a... A general, like anyone can kind of sign up and just exhibit a little bit of work. Oh, okay. Where like, is this? Where was this based? The, it was uh, like East London, wasn't it? T- tobacco warehouse. Tobacco Dock. Yeah, that's yeah, the one. Okay. Yeah, East, in it. Yeah, that Shadwell um, Way kind of. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, I I just, you know, applied. It's like 40 quid or something. And I really didn't really expect much from it. And then I sold a piece. <laughs> and, Mad. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, oh, shit. I just sold a piece. Just like couldn't believe it you know made it more real yeah uh and then after that i was like you know i don't know you just, i just kept doing the street art with nathan kept developing my stuff uh and then you know we came across opportunities um we, we had the show in london bridge yeah yeah and that was from my ex-girlfriend didn't it she she found a message in a group no way yeah and then we phoned this guy up and then he was like yeah come down and he was chatting to me he's like oh, yeah i'm not sure guys yeah yeah and then, <laughs> and then Nathan's <laughs> like, "Oh, this is my work," and he's like, "I know who you are," and he just, <laughs> and he just completely ignored me and spoke to Nathan the whole time. <laughs> oh, charming! <laughs> See how it was, that goes. It was all good. Like, uh, it was all good. But you know, that was then like the first proper show. Wow. And yeah, yeah. yeah, I was so nervous. God, I was nervous. Yeah, I bet you were. But, um, I don't blame you. Well, because you'd had this. Just, I'd never done anything like that in my life. Yeah. You know, and but it was fine. It was a whirlwind, but it was fine. And then every show since then, it's been a lot calmer. You guys have this. I don't know. I don't know if you remember VOP. You know, Solo One and Stylo and Mia and those guys. There's, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. You know, what I mean, there's a real. Um, each one of you hold like a kind of power within the the collective that you guys kind of roll with. And I always find it quite interesting when you get crews like that with a dynamic. I've seen a couple of your guys' blockbusters and it's like you all cover different bases. I I really love that. And I don't know, is there any... (laughs) Because I know you guys also go out to get um, singly a lot. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Do you really feel the difference like when you're not together as to when... Do you know what I mean? As to when you're forming like Voltron? Yeah, I mean, I feel the difference. I mean, I've always started on my own anyway. And then for years, it was just like, oh, man, I need to paint with some people. Then now I paint with a lot of people. And the difference is I find, like, when I'm on my own, I'm more free to not necessarily artistically. I'm more free in terms of, like, oh, I paint on my own, I hit this spot, then you know what? I might just go to another town. When you're in the group, you, you, you paint your wall. Then you say to other guys, hey, guys, you want to paint anymore? Or sometimes we get lifts in the car, so it's like you'll paint. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's, you're kind of limited. When you're on your own, you, you're unlimited, isn't it? Like, when you go and travel on your own, you, you, there's no one stopping you. You can do whatever you want. But when you're with certain people, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. Um, it's, it's great fun. Fun, yeah. You, when, when you're with people, you share moments. And when you're on your own, you, you don't share them as much. Mm. That's, that's the difference. And the mind can often forget things. And then you've got a mate later down the line saying, do you remember when you did that? And that's that's a real nostalgic trip, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly, man. But there's a there's a reason why I brought this up is because you have been going around a lot of towns and cities recently, yeah, and yeah. and you've had a few narrow escapes from what I've, I'm led to believe. You had a, a, a an altercation in Sheffield, which you were you were completely unaware yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, so like, um, I went Sheffield. I went to Sheffield with my friend of mine, I had my dog there as well. I thought, you know what, it's, you know, it's the UK tour, the, you know, it's called the, uh, you know, the Out and About tour. That's what I've been doing um, for the past about year and a half now, I was just hitting different towns around the UK. Um, so like, yeah, so Sheffield was on a location, went there late September. I went there, uh, doing, yeah, did a few pay stops, having a great day, you know, I had my first Peroni, I thought, yeah, today's gonna be a good day. You know, I think it was about like 3.30. And I thought, oh, let me do I was right on the high street. I thought, oh, there's a nice hoarding there. Nice hoarding, all wood. I thought, you know, let's, let's paste up there. What is hoarding for people that don't know? What's Yeah, so hoarding. Um, so in the UK, we have hoardings. Hoardings are building sites that, are, that, have, um, that have been protected by uh, wooden panels. Um, so the wooden panels are there as just like a protector so people don't 
into the building sites. You go to other countries, there are no hoardings. It's just the literal abandoned house or abandoned building. But England, yeah, we have the hoardings. And sometimes the hoardings have adverts on them. But this one was blank. It was all wood, wasn't painted. So yeah, did a paste up, stop war. Wheat paste, uh, not wheat paste up, PVA paste up. Do you ever get problems where that's concerned, or is, is it a normal? Is it a normal situation that everyone's chilled with it and you don't get any problems? Everyone's chilled with it, apart from Sheffield. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so it's, it's less sketchy than doing spray paint. Yeah, it's less yeah. sketchy. It's quicker as well. Yeah, but um, yeah, so it's in Sheffield uh, doing a paste up, and uh, police come. They're just, I think they're just walking past, despite the, the foot patrollers. And then they were like, oh, have you got permission for this? Um, I didn't have permission, obviously. I just, I just blagged it, you know? <laughs> I, I just said to him, yeah, man, uh, I come here the other day, um, spoke to the builder. I said to him, mate, he's like, I put a little haste up, stop war. He was like, yeah, cool, man, just, just do your thing, innit? Um, so that's what I told him. I told him that I just saw a builder and I'm going to paste up on the wall. So they were cool with that. They were like, cool, man, but can we just take down your details just, 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 just in case? And I was, mm. just, I was like, cool, I've got nothing to hide. I'll, I will cooperate with you guys. You ask me whatever, I will give you whatever. So I was like, yeah, cool, my name's Nathan Bowen, blah, 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 date of birth, blah, blah, blah. And then they were like, oh, hang on, it, 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 it comes up as that you're wanted. I'm like, what? Wanted? I'm not, I'm not, I'm what? I said wanted, I don't know. I think the last time I was wanted, I was wanted in mortar back in 2017. But um, that was 2017, so the only thing I thought was, was that. And I said to him, what, what am I wanted for? I, I don't think it's mortar. And they were like, oh, you're wanted for a bit of street art you did in Lucian on uh, Lucian Tavern Pub. But it was, it was again, boarded up, but with the metal sheets. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, okay, that was back in February. Now we're in September. I've been chilling in my house day in, day out, and nobody has come for me. You know, I, I literally two weeks before this, I was down Thalkston Police Station collecting my cans, which they took back in June. That didn't flag up then. So why are you saying to me I'm wanted? They said, oh, this is weird. This is, this, is, this is weird, but you're wanted. So I was like, all right, cool. And I was thinking, all right, well, what's going to happen now? And I was like, oh, what's going to happen? She's like, oh, we're going to have to take you in. So I'm like, oh, what? Really? Oh, mate, they took you in? Yeah, man, they didn't handcuff me, but they searched me and they said, oh, you know, we're going to have to take you in and, and question you for something you did back in February, back in Lucian. You know, I'm in Sheffield, man. Don't forget, guys, I'm in Sheffield. Um, so, like, yeah, like, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah, I was, I, I got taken in, got put in a cell. And, um, you know, I've been in a cell a few times, but this time it was, it was really annoying because I had an extra burden on me. I had my friend with, my friend in Sheffield uh, with, with my dog. Uh, so I had that burden where I was like, yo, this is one of the first times I've been in a cell where I actually need to make a call. So, uh, yeah, I, I finally got the phone call. And he's like, it's mad. Like, they got some whole intercom thing where I was just chilling in the cell. And I pressed the button. I said, oh, yeah, can I get that phone call? They're like, oh, we're, yeah, we're a bit busy right now. Um, but uh, you get it soon. So, like, an hour later in the cell... Um, I get questioned. They said, oh, you know what? We're going to question you about, you know, the, the Lucian incident. And we're going to question you about the, the paste up. So, what? But it did me a favour. Because, like, when you're doing transfers, you're like, so my, my case, I was in a transfer. I was dealing with Yorkshire police and Metropolitan Police back in Lucian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm on a transfer right now. So when you're on transfers, the clock stops. So you're in the cell and the clock stops, like, you know, nothing's happening. Your clock had stopped. Like, when you get put in a cell, your clock's ticking, isn't it? You're going to get out. Yeah, yeah. But when you're in transfer, the clock stops. So they were literally contacting the Met, and the Met was deciding what to do. Are the Met going to come all the way to Sheffield, pick me up? They could be like, yo, leave him in there for overnight, and we'll pick him up Sunday morning. And, yeah, so, you know what I'm saying? Oh. So I was thinking, raw oh, man, that might be the case. So I was like, I need to make this phone call. So like yeah, um, got questioned. Luckily, got questioned about the the incidents, uh, and then um, yeah, I got out of the cell. But while I was in the cell for the last half hour, I got the phone call, and it was literally the phone call was from the cell, uh, talking to my friend. So yeah? they, they, they didn't give me a mobile phone. It was just like a little intercom thing, you know, little intercom uh, speaker. Thing. Yeah. And um, it, it was ringing, and I pressed, you know, the the the, the, the telephone icon mm -hmm. that means to answer. And I was chatting to my friend in the cell. I've never had that before. It was just like so high tech. Just chatting to my friend in the cell without a phone. Some just, Buck Rogers shit. Just by the intercom. So I was like, yo, yeah, cool, man. Like, I, 
I was going to say to you, just go home, but it's cool. I'm coming out of the cell. So like, yo, wait for me. Don't, don't, don't go to this. Don't, don't, don't meet me at a police station. Just meet me back in town. They're going to give me a lift. Don't, don't meet me at the, the police station because the police station was miles away from the town centre. Oh, but it's always the small mercies that you've got, got pulled aside in Sheffield as opposed to Lewis. I mean, it's, to me, it's, that's yeah, just all that's odd. It, no, like, like he was saying, he's like, oh, mate, that's a bit of hot fuzz there, man. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that, you know what I mean? It's a, nice, it's a, hot, it's a bit of hot fuzz there. Who were you with? Who was, um, who was your, bo your boy that was waiting for you? Oh, my mate's one of my artist friends. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, he's, uh, yeah, man. Um, we just, just go out sometimes and just hit different towns. Um, but yeah, it was... Um, it was uh, it was interesting, man. Like we got out, got out of the cell, missed the train, and I ended up staying in Sheffield, camped in a park. When yeah. you when you hit the smaller towns, man, like you just get stopped like so much easier. Really? Than when you're like painting in London. Is that just the, the rule of thumb? Be a little bit more vigilant. Yeah, they just they got nothing else to do, innit? it? Mm, so, yeah. oh, it's a nightmare, isn't it? So you think that the the the, the culture would have kind of you know leaked into more of the rural areas, but I guess they just don't get it enough. And uh, it... I mean, there was a lot of street art there, don't get me wrong, you know. There's oh, yeah, a... Sheffield, hold tight, Miss, yeah, hold tight, yeah, yeah, yo. Danny Cairns. Oh, yeah, Sheffield's fine. It was just, uh, unfortunately for me, it was just the fact that, like, I was wanted. I didn't know I was wanted. If I knew I was wanted, I wouldn't be doing them things. Oh, yeah, I would have went to the police station and dealt with it. I don't yeah. want things overhanging me, man. You know, I like to be straight and narrow. If you've got a problem, let's deal with it. And I didn't know I was wanted. And I said, that was a new one. That was the first one for me. Like, oh, you're wanted. I'm like, wow, never knew that back in February. So, yeah, um, yeah, that happened. And, oh, yeah, it made me stronger, uh, you know. Yeah camped, yeah, camped in the park overnight with a dog. It was good. Went to a 24-hour Tesco, got a barbecue, cooked, some, <laughs> cooked, cooked up some chicken wings, man, <laughs> then got the train the next morning. Jones. So it was like, so. but if you see the, the, the whole Sheffield was like, you, you break it down into thirds. The first third, wicked. The second third, in the cell, shit. Then the last third, dope. So, yo, man, yo, hit and miss. But at, at the end of the day, it was a memory. And, yo, I'm happy to talk about it. It's all right. <laughs> every fucksy, every cloud with this man, isn't it? Every right. cloud. Yeah, my bad, Sheffield. I've never actually been, so my bad. But mm -hmm. I was thinking of, like, we were in another town called Folkestone. Oh, yeah. And we got, we got, a, lot, Folkestone, yeah, we got yeah. a lot of grief there. So. Really? Like Folkestone, man. That's a good place too, man. Yeah, yeah. Folkestone's cool too. But. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's ain't no off-com business here, man. I'm, I'm non-partial. The whole type my Folkestone crew. All day. <laughs> Shit. Any other, any other towns you want to mention? Yeah, anyone else you want to mention there, uh, Harry? <laughs> Big up Bristol, innit? Yeah, well, come on, Bristol crew. All day. All day. Big up Bristol. All day. You know? So we've got the tile come. thing going in here, Harry, and, you know, you guys ain't too, you know, too... Um, yeah, you don't mind going on some different surfaces. I've seen this right here. I've seen obviously like the bins that you've been doing with the with the characters on. Oh, so bins, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then there's the, the, I mean, and there's the collaborative stuff as well. I mean, you know, I've seen so much stuff online. You guys are just relentless. Um, how are you gonna How are you gonna transfer this into an exhibition? Oh, mate, wait, wait till you wait, wait till Friday. Talk to, talk to me about it. Talk to me, talk to me. What, what's what's because they would have they they we've got to get them down there to all see right, this. So, all right, so we've had two previous shows, um, Bone and Blackmore One, Bone and Blackmore Two, and they were in uh, London Bridge underneath Platform One, under the arches, the old cable club. So, the, back in the day, you had the cable club and you used to go under the arches, queue up. It was basically that is the old cable club, and we had we had two shows there, right. the old cable club, London Bridge. Um, so like yeah, from that you know, so you know, for me yeah, I've got a fine art background, like I said, in it, back old school Saint Martin's boy, um, which I might add as well. If you want to check out the other podcast where we get deeper in, yeah. in a dive in that, you know the one. Yeah, that's it. You know, old school Saint Martin's. Um, so I've got a knowledge of like you know putting artwork on the wall as well as on the street. So we we we'll make canvases, we we'll do artwork on boards. Uh, so this for this show is with a bar now. So they've got a bit of clout as well. Mm. They've got their punters coming through. Legacy bar. Yeah, exactly. So like you know, it's double up the double up the punters, double up the people, double up the promotion. So yeah, we've um, I've, I've been making a lot of canvases um, from scratch. So I go to B and Q. Get the wood, cut them up, um, and yeah, get the staple gun and stretch the canvases myself. 
What? Um, so from scratch? All from scratch, yeah. All from scratch now. You know, back in the day, I, I, I'll be honest, always used to use cheap canvases. And um, there's a guy that told me, yo, man, stop using cheap canvases. If you're going to use a cheap canvas, you're right, put a frame on it. If not, make a get, get a thick edge. Use a thick edge. So like, yeah, for the shows, we're using thick edge. For this show, we're going to all use thick edge canvases. You know, thick edge like this thick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For those, yeah. So what is that for people listening? That's about... So those, that's about like... Uh, five, five, six, yeah. Five, six centimetres. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Five, six centimetres. That always looks three, hot on a wall, doesn't it? It's yeah, like... like three, four inch, three inches, something like that. I'm still rocking the, the framed one you've done for me in the pod trap, oh, brother. Nice one, man. Yeah, yes, man. It's yeah. still there holding pride in place, man. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, come on. Um, yeah, so it really is a case of attention to detail on this yeah. one. Yeah, so Harry will do the backgrounds, add his mist, add his colours, add his planets... Sometimes you use uh, mix it up with the masking tape, but yeah, man, he'll he'll he'll, he'll tell you about what what he talk he to me, do, man. Serious um, stuff. So I mean, you know, I made some canvases as well. Uh -huh. um, you know, that's you know, these are all oh look at all new skills in it. So yeah. you know, now I know how to make a canvas in it, and it's like oh, cool. Um, but yeah, man, some of them are pretty big. Um, yeah, you know, a couple of meters long or by a meter, two really meter, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then. Um, Prime it, prime it, and uh, white or black or grey, and then um, then I'll give it another prime with a, a maxi spray, mm -hmm. and then after that, um, either either I'll do the background first, and uh, as I said with this show, man, I'm, I'm not I'm not trying to be sci-fi. I've gone like autumn. So a lot of greys, a lot of purples. Really? Yeah. So, so yes, yeah, a different contrast to what to what we'd be used to yeah, seeing. Yeah. yeah. So I uh, try make more realistic in a in a way. Yeah. But, you know, I, I feel happy with what I've done. Um, so, yeah, then I'll do the backgrounds and then I'll give it to Nathan and he'll do his thing or we'll give it to Name, he'll do his thing, you know. Or sometimes vice versa, like they've done something and it's like, yo, this needs a background, this mm, needs yeah, something. Yeah. So then I'll, I'll give it to me, I'll just mask all the foreground and then I'll spray the background and pull it off and then you, you get, you know, nice lines and nice... Nice effects with it. Yeah, yeah. So. You guys have like the most fun lives. Like anybody that's like, <laughs> you know, listening to this in a nine to fives right now, big up the nine to five crew. You know, you guys have like so much, it sounds like you just have so much fun. It's like parcel, parcel fun. It is fun, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's what you make of it, you know. Um, yeah, you, you could choose to work where you work. Um, but yeah, the idea is, you know, you, you, you need to have that goal in mind, isn't it? Um, you know, I've always wanted to do different things in my life, but then I reached a point where the oh, I think art is the one. You know, I, I, you know, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a footballer. I wanted to uh, um, be a chippy, um, uh, you know, um, car carpenter. Um, mm -hmm. Loads of different things. Um, but then I just realised art was the, the way forward because art was, I've always done that. I've always been good at that. So, um, yeah, um, you know, it shows that, like, you know, people out there, like, you could realise that anyone could do art. You don't have to, you know, be this guy or this person who, who has a, like a mad background of like university and college. You ain't got to go to college to do art. You could just go to the shop, pick up a bit of paper or canvas and just express yourself. Remember, art is an intense form of individuality. You know what I'm saying? Just so you've got to remember that. It's Yo. an form of individuality. So your art may be, you know, using ketchup sachets and sp spreading them on the on the with your fingers on the on the on the on the canvas. Whatever, man. You know? Copyright twenty 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 two Nathan Bowen. That is your thing. You know, some guys wanna do their hand scripts in blood. That is your thing. <laughs> Who cares if you paint rainbows? Who cares if you bloody use Play-Doh? <laughs> you know what's funny though is that I think, I think at the same time though I think art becomes such a given these days because we see so much of it on social media and whatnot. It's almost like people don't. It's not that they don't appreciate the process because if you can't draw and you can't think and you really genuinely think how the fuck they do that, but but it's there's a level of complacency. You're talking about building the the, the canvas. You're talking about priming the. Uh, the, the, the piece prior, during and after. Yeah. You're talking about collaborating in a way that has never been done individually. So it's like, it's really conceptually, it's hard to kind of take that all in and say, wow, like, because it, it, it's, art is such a given to people nowadays, mm. isn't it? Absolutely. 
Yeah, man. And, uh, you know, um, so like, you know, with the whole Bowen and Blackmore thing, it was like, like I said, so if you take it back where, how he was doing his thing, I was like, yo, bruv, yeah, do more of that and let me just draw something on top of that. Mm. So, yeah, this was, he was in, he was in Battersea Park, um, four, my five, four, yeah, probably five years ago. And he was doing his thing, we were doing his drawings with the Poskas. And I was just like, all right, give me one of them and I'll just draw a character on that. Drew a character on it and I thought, man, that pops. And they started off with the astronaut demon because Harry was doing his space theme. Yeah. And I was, yeah, and I was just like, all right, uh, you know, the space theme, the planet. I was like, all right, let me do an astronaut demon. And I started doing the astronaut demon. And then I started doing, doing more demons on top of it. And I thought, dude, this works. Then we, yeah, we just started doing it on the street. Our, our, one of our biggest um, pieces was in Liverpool Street. Uh, literally, like, you know, come out of the station and you take a left, walking towards Shoreditch. Yeah, yeah, that rings uh, bells. It's just a big hoarding that was there for years. Loads of people hit it, then they buffed it out, then they hit it, then one day it was just balled it up and rubbish. And I thought, yo, that's the green light right there. Let's hit it. Then me and him hit that. We hit that and we had that notorious for a couple of years, right? Yeah, good day, that. Really good day. Yeah. Yeah. That was a fun day. It must be like a real, like yeah. a real touch when you see something that has got your guy's name written all over. I mean, this is graphic in a day. This is what graphers, this is what writers do. But um, you work with the environments. In a, in a, you, you take the, the negative space as well, and you, I, I, like, I kind of like the way that that is interpreted in with you I, guys. You know, we sort of, you know, like we're not, we're not trying to vandalize. You know, really, like, well, I, you know, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm looking for rundown bits of, you know, things, rundown hoardings, mm. primer black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks fresh, fresh canvas, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, sort of just black it, really, because it's a bit of wood at the end of the day. Yeah. So, if, you know, and then you put a high vis on, put some music on. Yeah, then it's not. Everyone's on the wiser. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's fine. And then, yeah, you know, it's like sometimes we hit like Oxford Street or Bank and stuff. Mm. Or, um, and you know you, you're doing your thing, and then you turn around, you've got thirty people there. <laughs> it's like, like a rock star levels. Yeah, like filming you and all that. It's the thing with you writers, man. It's like you, you get that immediate response, and the endorphin hit of doing it is immediate. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that feeling of like, yo, I've I've seen writers hang around their own their own piece for ages. Really. Well, you, it's because I, I guess in their heart they kind of don't want to walk away from it because they kind of know that it might get vanalized two days later. That. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I mean, like, I normally like when I do my piece, take a photo, g- give yeah. a look, and just go, man. Yeah. You know, make sure I sign my name, then I go, and I always think about the next piece, you know. Um, but it always makes me amazed, but to, you know, that some walls are still there, still going strong. Mm. If they get vandals, it's cool, man. Um, just go back and hit it, you know. Mm. Uh, but yeah, like you know, part of the game. Yeah, exactly. That's sort of been enlightened now, you know, in terms of like you know, with the whole paste ups, gives you more reach gives you more opportunity just to go out. I don't have to recce first. Because back in the day, it was always recce first. Um, it was recce first, come home and be like, all right, guys, or myself, I'm going to hit that wall and hit that one wall. But nowadays, it's like, yo, I don't know where I'm going. I'm going to go London Bridge, hit a train somewhere. Yeah. And, tube, and then I've got about five, six pay stops. Then I'll go to, like, Kilburn or I'll go to uh, Wilston Green or I'll go to Shepherd's Bush and... There's always a shop window that that is being abandoned, that as like just empty, and I just put a paste up on that. Everywhere, every high street, there's always an abandoned shop. How many paste ups do you create a week? Um, so I make about up to ten paste ups a week, and um, I've, I've slowed down recently because I've got the show to think about. But I've still been getting out and about. So I, w- I last went out on Tuesday last week. Tuesday I was in Streatham. Nice, yeah. Yeah, I had to, I had to deliver an art an art piece to a client in Streatham, uh, and I thought, well, you know, I've got a man with a van. I didn't bother use a courier, it's too expensive. So I've got a man with a van. Man with a van crew, come on. Yeah, a man with a type man with a van, art type men with van. <laughs> 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 hey, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, so yeah, I've got a man with a van, then I thought, you know, after, on the way home, I'll do, I'll do a couple of pay stops, because the high street, the uh, Streatham high street is just long, it's full of shops, so, yeah, I found a nice little window, abandoned shop to let. And yeah, I just pasted up a little character on there. And um, yeah, it was cool. Took a photo it's and done, you know it's what I mean? Like, it's, like a, it's like a promo for the, the event. It's, I mean, I know this is 24-7 for you guys, you know, doing your thing. But, you know, all of this is kind of... They're like little soldiers that are there 
you know, marking your territory, then it's promo that leads to a wicked exhibition, which is, is not a lot of people can say that they can achieve that on that level yeah, yeah. of being out there and doing it whilst doing an, an exhibition. Well, one thing Nath taught me was uh, about the art cage. So mm. he was saying, look, Harry, like, because I, I obviously for myself, I have a lot of self-doubts about what I, what I was trying to achieve, what I was trying to do. Right. And he's like, look, Harry, like, there's bare talented artists out there and no one sees their work because they're in the art cage. They're in their room <clears throat> producing all this amazing stuff. Art cage. And no one gets to see yeah. it. And he goes, that's why street art's so important because mm. yeah. it puts your work in people's faces. You know, you do a piece outside, you know, you had that piece outside Camden Town Station. Yeah. You got 10,000 pundits a day walking past it. This is before, um, you know... The situation. Yes, yes. The situation. <laughs> I know the one you mean. We won't talk about it. It's evergreen content, you understand. Um, yeah. Um, um, but, you know, that's it's smart like that, you know, and it all, it all links together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Driving force. Tour de force, Nathan Bowen, you know. Yeah. Tour de force. You need it, man. You need that drive. When you're doing these, when you're in this art game, you know, it's like, you know, like I said in the previous podcast, it's like UFC, isn't it? It's not com- competitive. <laughs> But you have to remain focused. You know what I mean? You have to be on on point, work out your next idea. And there's always room for learning. Mm. You never learn it all. With art and things like art and martial arts, there's always room for improvement. Mm. And that's how I see it. I'm always improving. I'm getting better and better. That's how I see it, you know? I'm always happy to take advice. Always happy to be like, oh, man, oh, I could do it that way. That's cool, you know? Yeah, it's better to get advice and to get feedback because without it, you don't move, do you? Mm, mm. That's that's it, you know. Um, so yeah, I, I I encourage other people to do art as well, even though they don't, they don't really do it. It wasn't a natural thing, but yeah, it's, it's always just like yo, everybody like was an artist. Everybody was artists when they were children. Mm. So you know, why not just keep that up? You know, um, and that's what we like to do in the adult life: keep it up. Hey, um, a, a good thing like when we work together is mm. we're like, you know, not just like name twenty six and. Uh, Dino X and mm. yeah, you know, Dino like, X, hold tight, brother. Yes, know, um, Capo X. as well. Capo, Capo, uh, yeah. Capo. Recent, you guys, Capo's been Dino X as well, but Capo has been out. He's been active. Yeah, yeah. man. Um, but um, you know, when when we you know when we're together like these different people, man, we you know you bounce ideas off each other in different perspectives because you, know? you both have you all have different yeah. you know superhero powers, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know, I'll be like, oh, you know, that would be cool, and they like, oh shit, I didn't think about that. Or something like that, you know. Or he'll say, "Oh, you should do that." I'm like, "Oh, that's a good idea," you know. And then, but it all because yeah. we're all so different, mm. you know. We all, feedback, isn't it? you know, it's feedback. Yeah, feedback. It works well. Yeah. yeah, it does. It does. So this will be an, an example of this um, this week, which you guys can be a part of. And how long is it on for? How long is the exhibition on for? Oh, till February, February. Yeah. So it starts um, uh, November the nineteenth, and it goes all the way till February the twenty eighth. So That's yeah, it's a good, good, good three months, I guess. Um, yeah, good, 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 nice long exhibition in Freud Bar, Covent Garden. So um, yeah, um, it's going to be a good show, and a lot of things going to come. <clears throat> We're probably going to come like three at a time. They're going to go to the bar in and out, do do a few little art shows on like maybe like a Saturday or Friday night, live painting. So you know, it's not just the show. If if you don't come to the show, if you miss this show. Um, we'll be doing other uh, promo bits during the time of now uh, while the show is on until February. So, yeah, live shows. So, yeah, if you miss this one, the main one, come to the live shows because we'll be there too, doing live shows, uh, free giveaways, you know, get yourself uh, some lanyards, you know, oh, all of that, all Yo. that funky demon so heads. There's a wallet with know. a lanyard. Yeah, well, not this is that wallet, but we've got other wallets, you know, but not this one. This is my unique wallet. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, but you get the lanyard all for free. Just come around, say hi, you know, stay high. Oh, yeah, People's Captain as well. Don't forget about them. Shout out to People's Captain. Yeah, People's um, Captain. Rocking a T-shirt. You know I mean? People's Captain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the mean? drink. Sponsoring the event, you know. These guys, you know, good... Good brewery. You've had a good relationship with these guys for a while, haven't you? Yeah, like we mentioned in the previous podcast, yeah, they sorted me out. So, yeah, they're sponsoring the show too. Um, yeah, and, you know, yeah, it's going to be good. Now. You're going to be there as well. Yeah, we are there. I'm there. I'm there. I'm in the like, swimwear. I'm there. You know, name <laughs> oh, yeah. is going to be there. Zombie's going to be there. Dina Wets, Capo. We've got Palmer Crafts in the place. She's making um, her fine art using resin. 
um, lit, uh, Sick. Pour, pouring like uh, liquid acrylic onto canvases. So yeah, we've got a whole mix, mixed batch going on in there. If there's anyone that I haven't mentioned, oh yeah, sorry, Steve McCracken, Magic. It's probably other names. If I mention you, please, please do not be offended. But yo, my heart is with you guys. We're all gonna be involved in the show. Big up Steve. Big up Magic. Yeah. All day. So there we are. You know what to do between now and February. Get yourselves down there. If you're checking out two months from when this came out, you still go and get it. Go get it. Um, big shout out, boys. Thank you so much for Thank coming you, through. Bro. Nathan Thank Bowen, you, yeah. Harry Blackmore inside the place, that's it. A bigger shout out to all the crews that, that are rolling all together on this one. I swear, it's going to be one hell of an exhibition. I'm going to be there beatboxing on the launch. Yeah, that's how we roll. Uh, we are like that, people. You stay lucky, all right? Uh, thanks a lot, boys. Nice one, man. Don't talk to anyone, I wouldn't. Peace. <laughs> hey, that was good, wasn't it? That's lovely, man. <laughs>